On this week's MetPy Monday, I'm going to show you how to use some new magic in MetPy to automatically get Cardify projection information out of CF compliant datasets. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to show you some new things that are in MetPy that let us automatically get Cardify projection information from CF compliant files. I'm going to be using a Go16 file as an example here. If you go back and look at some of the prior work that we've done with Go16, we do a decent amount of work to pull out projection information and go ahead and create that Cardify globe and the projection. In fact, we even had to have some if and else work in there because sometimes the projection would be Lambert conic conformal and sometimes it would be Mercator, depending on what mesoscale sector the satellite was operating in. Well, this week we'll show you how to make that a little easier. So I'm going to start out with a pre filled out notebook here. This is a slightly modified version of what you can find online in our Python workshop and the Python gallery materials that we have. Links to those, as always, will be down in the video description. So we're going to start out with our block of imports here. We're going to use date time, Cardify features to get things like uh, country and state borders. We'll be using Siphon, of course, to talk to a Threads data server to get the data, Matplotlib for our plotting, and the path effects for Matplotlib to go ahead and make our outlined highlighted text that stands out on maps pretty well. This is a little bit different. We need to just import MetPy. That's going to activate some of the hooks that let this magic happen. So we do need to import MetPy at the top level here. Then we're going to import add MetPy logo and color tables for making our plot pretty. We need X-Array, which is something new that we're going to have some more upcoming videos on, but we're integrating X-Array more and more into MetPy, especially with the upcoming release. And then we're going to get the NetCDF4 data store X-Array back end as well. And of course, the matplotlib inline magic. So our plots show up in the notebook nicely. So we'll go ahead and execute that cell. And now we need to get the catalog for our data. So I'm going to get the current time, uh, channel 8 for goes, conus region, and build my query URL here and get a catalog. If I look at the last five data sets, we can see that we're on the 30th here and a little after 1500 hours. I'm going to get the next to the last data set and then use OpenDAP for remote access. So we'll use the OpenDAP protocol. Here's where things are slightly different. Now we're going to use NetCDF data store and then open that data store as an X-Array data set. X-Array is really nice because it allows us to have things like attached coordinates. So we have a, a cloud moisture field or different model fields. The coordinate information for which X and Y coordinates and what projection that's in can travel along with those data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that cell. And if we just look at the data set, so our type is data set. It's got dimensions. It's got coordinates. So there's a time coordinate, an X and a Y. Then we have our data, the sectorized CMI. And we have all these attributes as well. So the attributes are things like the title. Importantly, that this follows the CF 1.6 conventions. Got the channel ID, wavelength, mode, it's conus, that's every five minutes, satellite ID, and then some important information that we're going to automatically pull out, like the center latitude and longitude of the fixed grid or geostationary projection. It's also got things like the date. So here's where the magic comes in. We can call on the data set, dataset.metpy.parsecf, and then the variable name that we're interested in. So in this case, we want sectorized CMI, that is the water vapor imagery here on channel eight. 
we're going to store that in dat. And then on that dat object that we get back, we can call .metpy.cartopycrs. And that is the automatically generated cartopy projection for this data. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll look at exactly what happened in a little bit more detail. So first we'll look at dat. So now this is a data array. So not a data set, this is just the array of data, but notice it still has coordinates attached to it. So it is the sec drive CMI data array. It has time X and Y. And it also has this CRS coordinate that MetPy has put in there for you that talks about what the projection is and has all of that information. And then of course the regular attributes. If we look at the projection, there's not a lot of information here, but it is a Cartopi geostationary projection. So what MetPy has done is gone into this metadata. It knows that fixed grid is geostationary, and it knew based on the CF convention that it needed to look for things like center latitude and center longitude and automatically generated that projection for us. So now when we make our map, all we have to do is pass projection equals proj which was generated right here. Everything else is taken care of. Then this is all the exact same as we've had in other examples. So I'm calling IM show. In this case, I'm looking at X and Y coordinates in dat to get the extent. We're setting our color table and the norm on that. We're adding things like country and state borders. Get the timestamp put some text on the plot, use the outline effect, and add our logo. So if we run that cell, which takes just a couple seconds to run, we'll see that we get a really nice map output without us having to do anything for the projection. So now if we were to change, and let's say instead of looking at CONUS, we wanted to look at Mesoscale 2, which may or may not be in the same projection. I'm going to go ahead and run all the cells. So now we're getting Mesoscale 2 imagery. And there we are down in Florida. We didn't have to do anything. The projection may or may not have changed, but we didn't have to worry about it. So I hope that you find this feature of MetPy useful. And let us know if you're running into any problems. All the normal support channels, of course, are down in the links section. We also encourage you to go and ask questions on Stack Overflow so that everybody in the community can benefit from the answers. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.